Greetings and salutations, Tube Dwellers. I'm your host, The Mad Bag. We're going to do some more Dota 2 tutorial. Know thine enemy. More middle lane practice. This will introduce us to Limited Hero Pool that restricts the hero selection to 20 heroes. It's about a fifth of the overall hero pool. Towers. Defend and attack all mid lane towers. I assume that means tier 2, tier 3, maybe even tier 4, the Ancient itself. This might end up being uh, quite a long tutorial slash video. And items. All items are unlocked. Once per generation, the great forged wheel books turn slowly in the wind and moan out tales of an age long forgotten. But now a strange wind blows, and the forged books sing like nothing heard before. A song of conflict and a, a looming conflagration. The prophecy of a war that will sweep down from hidden plains and engulf the world in its fire. Oh my, how ominous. Let us begin! Limited heroes. Okay, so uh, first tip. Whenever you see this list, you can scroll this list. You can also uh, begin typing to jump straight to whatever hero that you type out. You can also, also use the control key and see the grid. Now, as it said, this is a reduced hero list. These are only 20 heroes. Uh, there are a lot more heroes than this. What hero do I want to play? Um, let me get a hero that I haven't had a video on yet. That would be pretty cool, right? Um, there's actually a few here that I haven't had a video on. Um, some of these are not very good mids. Either. Either. The Vengeful Spirit, that's a decent mid. You know what, I haven't had a Drow video, and a Drow's a really popular one. Uh, Drow is one of the heroes that I would say is really good to, uh, pick in the, in the, uh, in the early stages of learning Dota. I'm not... I'm Destroy tired. both enemy mid lane towers. Since I'm alone, I'm gonna have to get the Courier. Ideally, a support would do this, not your mid lane or, uh, any carry on the team. Uh, let's see. It advises that I get some things that I can't necessarily Sound get, so let's just get some regen. And, oh, again, they're, they're screwing with me on this time. Normally you are out here on this first wave. Normally that wave does not happen in front of you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up Frost Arrows for the potential of having to fight a hero. If you're against players, Frost Arrows is probably gonna be your best bet. That, uh, allows you to Frost Arrow first, and then move with their escape route, and get some shots off as they try to run away. Frost Arrow, of course, reduces movement speed. The first level is 11%, and each it's shot battle. requires some mana. Woo! I have to admit that the Drow's attack animation is not the easiest. She's got a little bit of a draw before the fire goes, and then the arrow itself has some travel distance, or uh, I should say, some travel speed, that makes uh, popping off the last hit a little bit more difficult than normal. We're gonna go ahead and get the bow damage, the uh, passive. Second, silence is a great spell. If I was against uh, a number of spellcasters, I might take the I silence here instead silence. of that bow damage. But as you can see above the top, or up by the top, I am against the Juggernaut. Agreed. And that computer is not being very smart and trying to run from me. I'm okay with that though. Onward. The computer is allowed to be stupid. You'll figure this out in bot matches pretty fast. They do not gauge player skill very well whatsoever. <laughs> Level up my frost arrow there, make the movement slow even heavier, so if I get a chance to kill him, that's just gonna lend to it, and oh my god, the damage I'm already getting on this tower. If this were a player, this would be a risky spot for me to be. The Juggernaut doesn't have any stuns, but it still stands true that, generally, he can get kills easier, he can get last hits easier when he's under his tower, and uh, he can gank me a little bit easier. If a support shows up from a side lane right now, it would be incredibly easy, given how close I am to his tower, for them to uh, get a kill on me. Especially if it was like a Rubik that could say, that. telekinese me, and then toss me towards Silent the tower. My lane is staying quite pushed towards him. I go and, and that is a result of him not getting any attacks on the mobs. There was a miss. And me uh, getting plenty. Into the Even just last hitting, you kill mobs off a little bit faster Enough. than they would normally die. I guess unless you're perfectly last hitting, only getting the very last attack, then that's not the case. Let's go ahead and pick up the silence now. The extra damage from the bow pass would be nice. It goes from 16 to 20 percent, but that first level of it is more of a, an effectual change than our subsequent levels. My bow is drawn. I'm just gonna toss an arrow at the jug whenever I can. Uh, depending on what hero you're against, if you're against a hero that harasses back a lot, like say an OD. 
Um, it might be good to prioritize a little bit more harassment on the hero and slightly less on last hitting. I'm basically prioritizing, oh, that was terrible. Prioritizing all the way on last hitting. And as you can see, I'm not all that great at it. There are a couple heroes I feel like I'm really solid at last hitting with. The vast majority I feel like I'm okay, but not great. There's a lot of attack animations that are really funky too, even on yes. some melees. The Tidehunter is one that comes to mind who has a little bit of a, a swing back. And oh, that was close. Oh, another close one. Denied. Two denies. Actually, I don't think I got that second deny, but that's okay. That wow, they killed our catapult. That should help. Uh, things like a catapult in a lane oh, will make good. creep equilibrium swing whichever way the catapult is. <laughs> so if a catapult's in their lane, then you might want to be careful. Creep e equilibrium is going to be swinging your cool. direction. So you might want to try to get some auto attacks off whenever they have a catapult and you don't. Just to uh, try to make sure that that equilibrium stays equal. Like you can see, that wave got wiped out a lot faster than the enemy wave. A lot of times you can see some uh, numbers of enemy troops that'll give you just generally a good feel for when that equilibrium is going to be swinging and can really let you begin to expect the equilibrium, anticipate it, instead of waiting to see when it happens. Taking some creep attacks there. You see how much health is missing just from that little burst that I talked about in the last episode. Just when all the creeps get to you in the, so the first hit they all do. It makes quite the difference. Your middle tower yeah. is under attack. Oh, he's slowed. Oh, man. Just now got my ultimate. I think I got him. I don't think he can get away. Especially not with that slow and especially when he runs back towards me. It'd take a tower shot to get it. Less than ideal, but... Worth it. Definitely worth it. Sometimes getting first blood is worth a death. If they die first, you get experience for it. And the first blood gold bonus ensures that you don't lose gold on the overall trade. Of course, you don't want to die, but sometimes uh, sacrificing your life can be worth it. I got the pass of a moment ago, the uh, ultimate the ultimate ability for the drow. Let me talk about it. Uh, the drow's ultimate ability is a passive that grants you your primary stat, which is attribute, in large amounts whenever there's not an enemy hero near you. I believe the range is 375. Yeah, 375. So if, if there's an enemy hero within 375 AoE of me, then uh, I don't get the bonus from this. But you'll see there's a number down here. The white is my base, and the... Uh, the green is the additive, so you can see that my agility is huge, it's 37 plus 45, and you see immediately upon getting that, my damage has jumped up to over 100. Whenever I close in though, and I'm going to do it here just to demonstrate, on an enemy hero, uh, and they get close, you'll notice that, that 45 will disappear. And you can actually see a, an effect on the drought too that lets you know when that happens. You'll see some, you see like the blue on me, or I don't know, like white, I guess. Like uh, smoke is kind of what it looks like. Whenever I get close enough, and, and he's not letting me, there, there I get close enough for just a second. That bonus goes away. So that means that as the drow, you want to keep enemies at arm's length at all times. You don't want to get too close to him. Getting that frost arrow is going to slow him down enough that he can't run for my next few attacks. And that frost arrow is going to take the kill. Getting two ganks on him, I have heavily won middle lane. If this was a real match, I would look at taking that kill and off the back of it rotating towards uh, one of the side lanes and trying to help them get a gank, just to make sure that the lanes go towards our favor too. Something else I've been totally neglecting, because I wasn't sure if it was even turned on in this tutorial, are the runes. You just saw me go up and check the top rune a second ago. How did I miss that last hit? Terrible. That is my thought. So uh, runes spawn so every good. two minutes. I should say runes have a chance to spawn every two minutes. And if they spawn, they spawn in one of two locations. In the early game, runes spawn a lot more often than in the uh, later stages of the game. Yes. You dead. And uh, those locations that runes can potentially spawn in are right here. You can see the little little beam of light. And uh, right down here, another little beam of light. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of high ground next to each of those that has an eye on it. It's a great place to put a ward. A lot of times supports from each lane will do this. Um, there's an eye up over there. 
Uh, wards will help the mid ensure that they know where the rune spawns, when it spawns, and be able to get to it before their middle opponent. Whoever wins mid can really push the entire game towards the favor of their team just by going out and helping the lanes the second they start to get an advantage in mid. And tower down! Now I've got a lot of money, I've also been totally neglecting that. Obviously a lot of my focus is in the wrong places. It's on talking, it's about thinking, uh, it's on thinking about game mechanics. Silly stuff that it wouldn't necessarily be on if I were in a real match. That should have been a frost arrow. If that was a frost arrow, I may have been able to gank him right there. Forward. Oh, that fire did oh. not happen. Wow, what are you running from? Or where are you running towards, I should say. I am absolutely owning this juggernaut. Of course, uh, anytime I do bot matches, which I advise you do bot matches, um, anytime you're playing an unfamiliar hero, you should go do a bot match with it first. Uh, let's see, I actually don't want to do that. I've got these slippers. I don't want to do that, though. Um, let's just get the boots. Oh, my God. Got enough to just buy the boots straight out. I've almost got enough to buy Yasha straight out. That's silliness. That my oh, it hurts. Middle is missing. I'm going to go ahead and pop this salve. Apparently, Drow's going to call middle is missing automatically. I would really love... You know, I've already got the courier coming, so... I was going to say I would really love to be able to... Uh, get the recipe for Yasha before the courier comes out. That's not going to happen, though. Find your Actually, it just happened. Because I was tracking Yasha as part of Manta style. It gave me a money indicator. Yeah, you're dead. Oh, I didn't let the... F oh, you're not dead. Oh, yeah, you are. You came back for it. <laughs> it is uh, pretty ridiculous how much money I'm getting off this cat. I want to go check the bottom rune. I just want to see if the runes are even spawning yet. I'm not certain that they are. Drow was a great choice. Ah, they are! This is an invisibility rune. As I pick this up, I'm going to turn invisible immediately. And the invisibility, I think all the runes last for 60 seconds. Uh, the invisibility rune specifically is a special one. Um, I believe you can cast... Maybe it's just certain spells. There's some spells you can cast when you're still invisible by the invisibility. Of course, any attacking casts the invisibility off. Another neat thing about runes is that you can bottle them. There is an uh, item called a bottle. I'm not actually going to buy it. I don't know why I tracked it. Let's go back to that Manta. That Manta's pretty awesome for your illusions. Getting some additional damage, too. Oh, God, it hurts. I do not have any more regen items, so I need to be really careful. Matter of fact, I'm going to go check this rune. It's been ten minutes, so there's been five different chances for runes to spawn. I'm kind of surprised that that's the only one I've found so far. Of course, I haven't been checking them religiously. My bow is drawn. I haven't been getting these last hits very religiously either. If the drow were a priest, she would be failing her congregation. Man, this agility bonus from the level 2 of my alt is just silly at this point. Oh, oh my. Whoa, Hiccup. Let's go ahead and bring that and another salve out. That's going to put Yasha together. Oh, Jesus, man. Holy hold on. Okay, um... I think we're good. Uh, for some reason, my cursor was not confined to the screen, and it kept jumping out of the screen, and that was causing all kinds of Fraps issues. Fraps does not like it when the active window that is being recorded is minimized in any way, shape, or form. Boom! Okay, it looks like we're not going to go any further than that. It's only going to be the Tier 2 tower. I feel like there were a couple unfinished thoughts there. That's going to have to be okay. We're going to have to... Uh, we're going to have to continue to see the knowledge bits, the delectable bits of intelligence as I uh, continue other Dota videos and other tutorial videos. Huh, interesting that these go dark after you beat them, but this one doesn't. I guess there's a lot more middle lane practice to be had with all those other 20 heroes. Um, and now training skirmishes, apparently there's going to be a play versus bots match. Uh, that's interesting. I'm not sure I actually want to show a video on that because uh, you can actually, let's see, where is it over here? Practice with bots. On the play tab, you can go to practice with bots. You can set your difficulty. Um, the way I was able to just totally destroy that juggernaut makes me think it's probably on easy in the tutorials. Uh, I'll play on hard most of the time if I do a bot match. Hard bots will deny last hits, uh, just like most good players will. And they will, uh, they will also do lane switch ganks and such. Uh, I don't really see that on medium so much. Medium, I pretty much always crush no matter what. I can pick the invoker and be playing bad and uh, easily win out over medium. 
Um, unfair, I actually haven't played against yet. I imagine that they get extra gold or something and it's really crazy. I don't know. I want to see. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've already unlocked all the Acronicus pages, but I just want to check. Yeah, yep we have, because this was the end of that poem. So, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I think I'm going to check this mission out before doing the next video. And uh, if it's just some practice with bots, I may not do that. Maybe there's another one after that. Maybe it puts me in a queue with other people training or something. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll eventually get there and, and see what it's all about. Um, but, I don't know. Look forward to something from me in the future. There will be... Whoa, wow. Lore. The Bleeding Hills. The Rue Lands. Wow, I didn't know that you could you could hover over these and get lore. Hold on. We may have a good additive for the end of this episode. What do we have here? The Wailing Mountains. High in the Wailing Mountains. The aesthetes gather in reverie when the sacred wind blows. At these times, the wheel books sing of a great rift in the wholeness of existence, a disharmony sown from a single paradoxical thought conceived in the divine consciousness. The wailing one could not think this thought and be one being, and so the great unity was cloven. When he had been conjoined, was rent asunder. I'm sorry, what had been conjoined was rent asunder, and out of that great division, the universe was born. That sounds so much more interesting than Christianity. The Rulands! Steel met sorcery in the war to claim the riches said to be buried beneath the rocky Rulands, yet the victor was granted no celebration or solace for their costly campaign. As they mined into the earth, they found only the treacherous graves of ancient lava tubes. The rumors that sparked three kingdoms into bitter war had yielded nothing, and the price paid was enough to topple them all. The Rulands, the graveyard of empire. The Bleeding Hills. For many centuries, the Bleeding Hills have been known for their terry blood. A thick, vicious fluid. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, viscous. Viscous fluid which flows down from the uplands, gathering in slickened black ravines to accumulate in killing pools, where the bones of many ancient beasts now reside. The slightest touch of flame will ignite these pools into an explosive blaze. Wow. Very crazy lore in the world of Delta. God, I would so love an RPG in this, in this world. The heroes would be endless. Make like a, I don't even know. I don't even want to liken it to anything. I want it to be a Dota RPG, not like anything that's been done before. All right, uh, that's gonna be it. As I believe I was saying right before I realized that I could look at lore on the terrain, uh, there will be more Dota content from me. Even if I don't end up playing the last two tutorial missions, there will definitely be some general games, and I don't always drop the most of knowledge. Uh, a lot of times I, I do this late night Dota series where I basically just play with my friends and uh, record and upload it. I think I'm going to start uh, taking certain good games and watch the replay from my perspective and then just commentate over it the way Purge does about all of my actions, about the hero, about just uh, general good play and try to do more knowledge dropping than what I do in my late night Dota series. Uh, and that will be held in the future. Thank you all. Goodbye.